So if we take those immediate things first, then I think there are a number of issues that they're experiencing which are causing particular challenges in organisations. And I guess first and foremost amongst those might be the immediate shock to the organisation of the Brexit vote, which I assume most organisations will have felt regardless of, of their workers or how their workers might have voted. Um, and that's a kind of fundamental shock to the discourse in organisations. So, it, you know, cast your mind back on the day when people came into work, everybody was thinking about it, and some obviously had more invested in the decision than others. And I think the second thing building on that is that um, where individuals have felt quite affected by the decision to leave, then how does HR respond to that? So who are they? What is it they fundamentally fear? And how might the HR function respond? So I suppose typically lots of people have considerable investments in the decision. Um, we, we think perhaps mostly about the EU citizens that work amongst us and how they felt about the result and what it might mean for them, not only in terms of whether they're going to have a job going forward, but also whether they're welcome in the UK, whether their family would be welcome, whether they should put down the roots that perhaps they were intending to put in the UK. And I think organisations have, have struggled to think how they might respond to that. But more broadly, there are lots of workforces now that are uncertain about relocations, about um, another recession, what that might mean for their organisation. And in the public sector, I guess increasingly people fear another wave of austerity perhaps hitting them, which will be quite difficult for them to respond to. So those immediate things, I think one of the difficulties has been that the organisation hasn't really known what it can say. So it, it's very difficult for HR to know what it can say at a point when there are no ready answers. So it, it was a time of chaos and it remains a time of chaos. I mean, if we think about how quickly um, the scenes changed and how quickly politicians resigned and organisations struggling come to terms with it. And I think that's not something that's new and unusual for HR to have to deal with moments of uncertainty. But I think this has perhaps been one that has hit across the country much more than um, others might have hit particular industries or particular organisations. So that's the, that's the other challenge for HR is what can it say? And I guess the only truth in all that is that it's better to say something than to say nothing at all. And there's a real lesson, I think, that um, organisations can take from that, that they need to say something. And to, even if it's to say, we just don't know yet, we're monitoring, these are the data that we're going to look at, etc, etc. The third factor that I think organisations have felt is a sense of cultural hijack. So they've been uncertain how their workforces will respond. I think for a lot of organisations there is either the fear of harassment incidents in the workplace or actual harassment and the CIPD survey quite re recently showed that about a third of organisations they contacted had either experienced harassment or had heard about it but it hadn't been reported officially. So I think that's a big concern and I guess when we exist in a kind of knowledge worker, knowledge organisation type bubble, we don't tend to think about those kinds of issues as being a big issue in the workplace but they clearly are for an awful lot of employers of migrant labour and so it's about trying to understand that but maybe the discord runs deeper than that because it's not just about whether you're a migrant or not a migrant to the UK it's also about how you voted whether you voted in or out um, and there's been quite a lot of intergenerational conflict around the in or out vote as well all of which will be an issue for the HR department to try and think about how it soothes things and make sure things don't get out of hand. And I think finally, um, HR has its agenda, it's always really busy, it always has lots of things on its plate and this is a, a, one of those kind of big shocks that upsets everything and means it can't necessarily go forward with a lot of the intention it had. So those are all the kind of shorter term things and I think if you move into the medium or longer term scenarios then obviously the uncertainty increases.